Our contestant, Kathy Cox, is playing for $2,000. You pick the second grade animal science question. True or false? Crawfish are fish. You said true. Our superintendent of schools is sweating it out on a second grade true or false question. But you know what? With $2,000, you can eat a lot of crawfish. Yeah. You're exactly yeah. right. Crawfish are not fish. They're actually crustaceans. Good job. All my fifth graders had the right answer. You're doing great. You've got $2,000. You've got all your cheats left. It's time to choose another okay. classmate. Okay. Hey, sweetie, how are you? Hi. Kathy, I got a little surprise for you. Uh-oh. We have got a special video message for you uh -oh. from the Lieutenant Governor oh, of Georgia. No. Take a look. Yay! <laughs> Hi, Kathy, it's your Lieutenant Governor, Casey Cagle. I don't want to put any pressure on you, but you're representing the entire state tonight. <laughs> I hope you're smarter than a fifth grader and bring the million dollars back to our beautiful Peach State here in Georgia. And Jeff, I know you live outside of Atlanta. And I want to let you know, as your lieutenant governor, I can make life very difficult for you. <laughs> so go easy on our superintendent and good luck, Jeff. You. you better win some money. I'm going to be in trouble if you don't. All right, eight subjects remaining. Okay, okay. Second grade spelling, all right. Okay, second grade spelling. It's worth $5,000. Here is the second grade spelling question. How many times does the letter D appear in the following word? Granddaughter. How many times does the letter D appear in the word granddaughter? Francesca has locked in her answer. Okay. Now, what kind of speller were you in school? I was a terrible speller. And Absolutely. I would imagine now you use spell check all the time, too, don't you? I do. I do. But for this one, I picture the word granddaughter in my head. And so I'm going to say twice. There's two times the letter D appears in granddaughter. I'm going to lock it. That tells me a little bit about your confidence level because you locked it in and then you said, come on, Francesca. Because she can save me if I'm wrong, right? Maybe. Let's see. <laughs> Take a look at the board. Francesca said the letter D appears in the word granddaughter two times. OK, OK, so. So she can't we'll... save you. OK, but hopefully we're both right. Ah, <sighs> Kathy. Oh. Oh. Am I not remembering it right? You're both granddaughters yeah. and you're both right she got five thousand dollars g-r-a-n-d-d-a-u-g-h-t-e-r ready slap it okay Woo, that was good all right seven subjects okay we got a first grade question sitting down there two third grades two fourth grades and two fifth grades First grade English, all right. All right, ladies, see if you can do it again. The first grade English question, worth $10,000 is this. What is the two letter abbreviation for the word doctor? What is the two letter abbreviation for the word doctor? Francesca has locked her answer in. Now this, again, it doesn't seem hard, but it's kind of tricky, because is it before the name or after the name? Oh, man. Is there any clarification I can get on that? <laughs> well, it's a first grade question. OK, OK, OK. That's true. OK. Um, all right, so again, I'm, I am. I'm thinking too hard. I'm putting too much into it. OK, so I'm going to say that the two-letter abbreviation for the word doctor is D-R. 
So you were torn between two answers. You went with DR. What was the other? MD. I think the key to this is the word abbreviation. I hope so. I hope so. Not medical, doctor. Yeah, yeah. Knees yeah. are shaking. Yeah. Ooh. Your hands are shaking. <laughs> You're as bad as me. You're messing with her. Yeah. You're right. You got $10,000. <laughs> DR. Thanks, my Justin. All my fifth graders had it right. Good job, gang. All right, time for another classmate, Kathy. <laughs> All right, Jenna, have you ever been in any trouble at school in your whole life? Uh, yes, I have. For? Um, when we were at recess, and these two kids came over to tell me that we were leaving and I wouldn't go in. Five minutes later, I'm like, guys, this is like ditching school, and then we ran inside and we got in so much trouble. Oh. I learned my lesson. You learned your lesson. But it's like, don't do it again. Don't do it again. Yeah. All right, it is time to pick another subject. There's six of them up there. What would you like to do, Kathy? This is the crucial money, so I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose fourth grade social studies. Fourth grade social studies. Okay. All oh, right. Come on, come on, Jenna. Okay. You just skipped the third grade. Now, I you did, did teach social studies, I did correct? teach, so I feel that this one, if I get to 25, then I'll go to... You know, so I, I feel You're... like this is a good one here. How many years did you teach social 15. studies? Fifteen. Fifteen, all right. Our fourth grade social studies question, worth $25,000, is this. The U.S. Naval Academy is located in what city? The U.S. Naval Academy is located in what city? Jenna has locked in her answer. You are smiling I... like a Cheshire cat. Hey! because my brother-in-law and his wife went there. They both got appointments to the U.S. Naval Academy, and the U.S. Naval Academy is in Annapolis, Maryland, and I'm gonna lock in my answer. Luck was working for you because Jenna is also from Maryland. Oh. She wrote down Annapolis, and guess what? You're leaving here today with no less than $25,000. How about that? How about that? Look at the board, Kathy. We are halfway to the million dollar question. We're going to be playing for $50,000 when we come back. Don't go away. Contestant Kathy Cox is the superintendent of schools in my home state of Georgia. You've already got 25 grand. What are you going to do with your winnings? It's going to go to the three state schools. I have a Georgia School for the Deaf, a Georgia Academy for the Blind, and the Atlanta Area School for the Deaf. And You're going to give the money to them? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. How good for you. Good for you. Right. Now, Kathy, with this question, there's no risk of giving money back. You can win money, you don't have to give any back. It's worth $50,000. What would you like? Okay. I, um, I've worried about geography questions. And so I'm going to go for fourth grade world geography and get it out of the way. Fourth grade world geography, all right. Okay, okay. Get it out of the way. It's an interesting strategy. You said you worried about that. I have worried about it, so I want to go ahead and get it out of the way where I still have my, my saves and... Now, did you ever cheat in school growing up? Yeah, spelling. You know, I was really bad at it. So, in seventh grade, I forgot to study. And I wasn't very good at cheating either because I thought, you know, nope, the teacher wouldn't see the list in my lap. Yeah. yeah that's so I never cheated off anybody else. One but... of the first mistakes. Yeah, Especially if you're, if you're a bad speller, copying your own list is, is not a good idea. <laughs> All right, it's fourth grade world geography. It's worth $50,000. Okay. Here's the question. Here we go. Costa Rica oh, gosh. borders two countries. Nicaragua is one of the countries. 
What is the other? Costa Rica borders two countries. Nicaragua is one of the countries. What is the other? Jenna's locked in her answer. Have you ever been to Costa Rica? No, I haven't. Mm. Wow. This is tough. This is, I knew this kind of question on world geography. Maybe I played this strategy wrong. Maybe I should have waited and taken it later. Oh, goodness. Okay, so I'm trying to picture all of that coming down. Panama. You know, I just am not sure. Do you have an idea? I do. I Well, I have a guess, and it is really a guess. And Jenna took a long time to answer herself. Though she was faster than you are. Yes, and so I'm debating, do I, do I peek? Do I copy? Well, let's, let's talk about where you're at. Okay. You have an idea. I think, I think it's Panama. I think. Okay, you have all your cheats left. Right. You have a peek, which means you can peek at your classmates' okay. paper. You have a copy, which means you have to take the answer that they have written down, and you have a save, meaning if you guess wrong but they're right, they save you, and we continue with the game. As wow, we, wow, as we wow, said wow, earlier, wow, no wow. reason not to answer it. Oh man, this is hard. This is really hard, but I want to give money to those schools. Um, okay, since I have a guess of my own, and it, oh, I hope it's what we would call an educated guess. Um, I'm going to say Panama, and I'm going to lock my <laughs> All right, here's your strategy then that you decided to use. You wanted to throw that answer out there. Yeah. And then you hope if you're wrong, maybe she'd be right and she'd save you. Yeah. So take a look at the board. Let's see what this fifth grader said. Puerto Rico. Okay, so she's not gonna save me. She's not gonna save you. It is not Puerto Rico. Okay, so I gotta be right. You gotta oh. be right. I swear, we tried to find the smartest contestants in America this season. You're representing superintendents of education from all over the country. Uh. Oh, did I embarrass us? Did, did you think of any other possibility? What about Honduras? It's not Honduras. Okay. Oh, gosh. What about Guatemala? Oh, no. It's not Guatemala. I El Salvador. El Salvador. Now you think of El Salvador. Oh, no. It's not El Salvador. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, gosh. I, this is killing The me. state school superintendent oh. of my home state of Georgia just won $50,000. Look at the board. You still have two third grade questions remaining. I two do. fifth grade questions. You have two classmates left to choose from. Pick one of them. Okay. All right. Bryce, come on up here. All right, Bryce. Bryce, what She's are you representing good at? my home state? We need to make her look good. Um, I'm good at cultural studies and health. Th oh, the two okay. third grade subjects. All right, all right, good, good, good. I'm gonna go for third grade help. Third, third grade, grade help, okay. Okay, all right, guys. The third grade help 
question is coming up when we come back. Our contestant, Kathy Cox, is the Georgia State Superintendent of Schools. That was a little close one yeah, on the last yeah, one. A little sweat. Yeah. But you got it right. $50,000 is in your pocket. We're okay. about to play for $100,000. You selected third grade help. The $100,000 question is this. Which of the following foods contains no natural protein? Whole milk, pure sugar, or raw eggs? Which of the following foods contains no natural protein? Whole milk, pure sugar, or raw eggs? Bryce has locked in his all answer. All right, all right. You're smiling I again. I am smiling. Well, one of the reasons I'm smiling is because it is multiple choice. So that's good. <laughs> that's real good. And I know I can eliminate C, raw eggs. And you know why? Because I'm a huge Rocky Balboa fan. And Rocky, in that first movie, came home from that run, and he took all those eggs, and he put it in that blender, and he drank raw eggs. And that was because he needed protein. It's nice to know that the superintendent of schools gets her education <laughs> from, from Rocky, watching Rocky. Rocky Balboa, that's right. The underdog, always for the underdog. All now, right. Because eggs come from animals and milk comes from animals, that means they've got protein. So the answer has got to be B. Pure sugar contains no natural protein. I'm blocking my answer. <laughs> Yo, Adrian. What are you gonna do with one hundred thousand dollars? You're right. Whoa! Whoa! Look at this little test. Only three subjects remain. Okay. you to say it out loud. What is the next correct answer worth? $175,000. $175,000. That's big. And so I'm going to pick third grade cultural studies. Third grade cultural studies. Cultural studies. Listen carefully, Kathy. A correct answer is worth $175,000. The third grade cultural studies question is this. Which of the following is not an official language of Switzerland? German, Italian, or Spanish? Which of the following is not an official language of Switzerland? German, Italian, or Spanish? Bryce has locked in his answer. Bryce, okay. Have you been to Switzerland? No. I would love to. You could go with $175,000. Yeah, except I'm giving it to the school, so maybe oh. the kids could go. <laughs> All right, okay. give, give the schools like 150 and keep 25 okay. and go okay. on a great maybe, vacation. Maybe I could. Uh, let's see. Um, now, what's funny about this is I said I'm no good at geography, but I know where Switzerland is on the map. And so... Too bad that's not the question. I, yeah, but it's going to help me. It's going to help me because knowing where it is on the map, it is in proximity to Germany and Italy. But it really is not close to Spain. And so I'm going to say that the answer is C, Spanish, locked in. Okay. <laughs> I'm really proud of my class over here. Oh. Every one of them over here has the right answer. Ah, oh, smart kids. But it doesn't really matter if they have the right answer. No, it doesn't. It matters if you do. Yeah. 
That's the big question. Do you have the right answer? Take a look at what I wrote on the board. Okay. Si, senorita! Kathy, it says right here on my card that you said if you want $175,000, you would get down on the floor and do the worm. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. <laughs> no. no. Oh. All right. I made that part no. up. Oh, what a rebuff. But. You are going to be playing for $300,000 when we come back. Welcome back. We are in rare air here in the classroom. The Georgia Superintendent of Schools, Kathy Cox, has got $175,000. My home state has yes. made me proud tonight. All right, two subjects remain. You are down to your last classmate. Olivia, Olivia. come on up here. <laughs> Olivia, yes. big, money Ooh, big money on the line right here. $300,000. I like money. <laughs> she big likes money. money. You Ooh. like money. I like money. We all like money. The school system likes money. Oh, yeah. They like money. Oh, yeah. Two subjects. Which one would you tell her to try first? Probably fifth grade art. Fifth grade art, but it's up to you. I'm going to go with fifth grade art. Fifth okay. grade art. OK. The fifth grade art question. Worth 300,000 is this. What is the name of the following painting by Norwegian artist Edvard Munch? What is the name of the following painting by Norwegian artist Edvard Munch? Olivia's locked in her answer. It's quick. Are you a fan of the arts? Actually, I am. And uh, as a social studies teacher, I always made it a point to, to make sure my students understood not just the political events of history, but all of the cultural events. So I know the name of this painting. You do? And, you know, I know that it was also painted not too long after the devastation of World War I. And the painting is entitled The Scream and I'm going to lock in my answer. You locked in very fast, and you risk a lot of money. But it looks like our superintendent of schools has made a little mistake. Uh-oh. This painting was painted in 1893. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Which was before World War I. Oh, no! Oh, I thought it... 1893? Really? Oh, dear. Here's where we're at. You said oh. you taught about this painting. I did. Maybe I... Was I teaching it all wrong? You got the year wrong. Oh, no. The era wrong. Oh, no. The war wrong. Oh, no. I think somebody's about to scream. You've got three hundred thousand dollars. You got three hundred thousand dollars. This place just erupted. And she said to me, I'm more concerned that it was not right about World War I. <laughs> you have all three cheats left. Okay. 
one subject between you and the million dollar question. It is fifth grade U.S. history. How were you at history? I'm great at history. Oh. I don't want to get too cocky, though. You know what? Yeah, don't get too cocky. I'm not going to get cocky. It is worth $500,000. Here it is. Which commanding British general surrendered to American troops at the Battle of Yorktown in 1781? Which commanding British general surrendered to American troops at the Battle of Yorktown in 1781? Olivia has locked in her answer. Let's talk about what's at stake. You get it right, you have half a million dollars. You get it wrong, you drop down to $25,000. You have all of your cheats left. Okay, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, um. What's going through your mind? I, I have a, a, I have an answer in my head. How confident do you feel about that answer? Uh, uh, somewhat confident, but not 100%. But because I have an answer in my head, I feel like I haven't used my cheats. So I'm going to choose to peek. All right, before I show you, what Olivia wrote. Okay. What are you thinking? I'm thinking Cornwallis. Okay, well, let's take a look at what your fifth grade classmate had to say. Okay. Olivia said, General Potter. Okay. That doesn't really help, because I don't think that was a, a big name back then. But because you peaked. I've got to answer. You now have to answer. Okay, well, you know what? I'm going to answer, and I'm going to say that the commanding British general who surrendered was Cornwallis, and I'm going to lock my answer. All right, you said you did not think that Olivia's answer, General Potter, was right. Right. If it is right, she could save you. Yeah. Do you remember Colonel Potter? Yeah, he was from, yeah, I think he was from MASH, right? From MASH. Yeah. Neither he nor General Potter was at the Battle of Yorktown. No. So your save just flew the coop. OK. Did your best. I did, too. Did my best. You know, and you were playing for such a noble cause, too. I mean, the I fact am. that you were giving all the money away for education. Oh. Kathy. Oh, no. Did I miss it on history? Does Benedict Arnold ring a oh, bell? Oh, no. Yeah, but he, he, didn't, he was us, and then he turned code. He didn't surrender. You can't fool me with that one. <laughs> Apparently, I can't fool you at all. It was Cornwallis. You got half a Let me tell you how the million dollar question is different from the 10 that you just answered. Your classmates go away. No help. Great job, you guys, on the test. Your cheats 
go away. During the first 10 subjects, you could see the question and still drop out of school with the money. Okay. On the million dollar question, you can see the subject, but if you elect to see the question, you have to answer it. Okay. You get it right, you win $1 million. Get it wrong, you drop down to 25,000. All right. Okay. The subject of the million dollar question is this. World history. Taking a little stroll. I am, I am. There's a lot at stake. A lot at stake. Take a look up at the board. Now, a few people have made it to the million dollar question before. Some went for it. I'm gonna say Mercury. I'm gonna say Howard Hughes. Some did not. I am going to drop out of school. And I'm dropping out of school, Jeff. I'm going to keep the 500,000. But nobody has won the million. All right, this is tough. This is really it's, tough. It's because, really tough. There's, um, a, there's a lot in the balance. There's a lot, but I guess the good news is there wasn't any expectation. I didn't tell the schools I was coming. Wow, okay. You know, if, if I blow it, oh boy. But I still didn't blow it, right? Because if I blow it, I'm still going to have $25,000 to give them, right? That's correct. Right? OK, so, and you know what else? If I drop out, I have to say I'm dropping out. You do. And that's not good for a superintendent of schools. Well, no. And especially because we're working so hard to keep kids from dropping out of school. You're right. So, so. What you thinking? I'm gonna go for it. Oh! You want to lock that in? You're going to go for it? I have to push that button, don't to I? Push that I've button. got to push the button and say, I'm going to go for it. Okay, now, I want the students of Georgia to know to, to go for it, to go for that education, to get that diploma. I'm going to go for it. Wow. Okay. Okay. Oh. You are a gutsy lady. Ooh. You have made Georgia proud okay. already. Take a look at the board. Okay. The subject is fifth grade world history. The question is going to be revealed right after this. Georgia State School Superintendent Kathy Cox is elected to go for the million dollars. You, and for such a noble reason, you don't want kids dropping out of school. I really don't, so I'm going to go for With it. With tears in your eyes, you made this decision. What an exciting way to kick off the third season of fifth grade. Kids, this is an awesome first day of school, huh? Yeah! What's going through your mind right now? We don't, we don't get here very often. I'm excited, I'm nervous, but I also feel like, you know, the last 10 years of my life, I've just been saying, go for it. Good for you. So I'm just gonna go for it. You ready to see it? I'm ready. All right, the world history question worth $1 million 
is this. Who was the longest reigning British monarch? Who was the longest reigning British monarch? Wow. Who was the longest reigning British monarch? Two things are coming to my mind. Two things. Two things. Elizabeth I was important, Spanish Armada, 1588, all that good stuff, but she really did the, the longest reigning. No, nope, that's not what she's known for. Okay. The two others that are popping up in my head are Henry VIII. But again, you, when I taught my students about British history, Henry VIII, generally, you talked about what he did with his wives. And, you know, as much as Henry VIII was important and there's all this stuff about him and he separated from the church and he created the Church of England, all that stuff, you don't hear him talking about him being the longest reigning. So what pops up in my head, oh gosh, I'm shaking, um, is Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria. A whole age was named after her. This has got to be the answer. Oh, if it's Henry VIII, oh, I'm going to be mad. But it's not. He wasn't there the longest. He got too fat and he died. Um, so Queen, Queen, it's got to be Queen Victoria. OK, I did my best. I did my best. Queen Victoria. Oh, Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria, I believe, I believe that Queen Victoria was the longest reigning British monarch, and I'm going to lock in my answer. You're making me teary-eyed when oh. you're sitting there going, do your best, do your best, do your best. You knew so many facts. How long do you think she reigned? I, wow, I think it was, I think it was over 70 years. And she took the throne young, and I'm just hoping it was longer than Henry VIII, because he reigned a while. Look at the board. Okay, oh boy. Longest reign. Yeah, yeah. You thought that she reigned for over 70 I years. I think. Thing. Oh, I hope, I hope. The reality is Queen Victoria yeah. only reigned for 63 years. Oh, dear. 63? Sixty-three. Is that 63. Long? Sixty-three. She she only okay. she only reigned for sixty-three okay. years. Okay, okay. Only. But that was enough to be the longest reigning <laughs> queen. Your parents took you to England. That's how I know that. Before we write that check for one million dollars, I want to tell you this is way better than Rocky Balboa. Oh yes! Way better. <laughs> Not only are you the first person to win a million dollars on the show, you are the first person that ever gets to say this. There's the camera. 
Hi, I'm Kathy Cox, Georgia State Superintendent, and I am smarter than a fifth grader. Hey, hey. Yeah. Tonight it's a special twin edition of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? All right, kids, you ready to meet your new classmates? Yeah! They are 25-year-old identical twins who graduated from Mounds Elementary School in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Welcome, Daniel and Dylan Cox. Yeah! Yeah! What's up, bro? How you doing? Yeah. Woo! What's up, bro? Woo! Daniel, how are you? Welcome hey, to the show. Hey, how are you doing? Dylan, how are you? Pleasure, man. Welcome to the show. I'm glad you have names on your shirts. <laughs> Look at you guys in school. How did, how did they even begin to tell you apart? Oh, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> now, so you guys are originally from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Both of you went to the University of Oklahoma. Yep, yep. Sooners then. Hi, Sooners. Sooners. You're big, yeah. Yeah. big Sooners fan. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, welcome to the show. You know how it works. On the board, I'm going to show you 10 subjects, first grade through the fifth grade. You get these 10 questions right, I'll give you one more subject. It will be worth $1 million. All right. Pretty good payday. And not only do we have your two heads working for one answer, you've got five more over here. They're going to be taking the test with you. We're going to let you cheat off of them. Let me introduce yeah. them. There's Jonathan. Oh, Jenna. Daniel, time to pick a classmate and let's get started. Okay. Uh, now she jumping right there. Yeah. 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 All right. All right, I gotta ask you an embarrassing question. Me? You think they're cute? You could say that. <laughs> well. You know, Jeff, the secret is only one of them, and I'm not telling you which one. Only, only one of them, and you're not telling me which one. <laughs> so one of you is cute, and one of you oh, isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> but you Full know suspense. what? Being cute doesn't really matter on this show. You gotta be smart. You gotta be smart. And right now, we're about to find out: Are Daniel and Dylan Cox smarter than a fifth grader? <laughs> If you had to help the attractive one and the unattractive one <laughs> with a couple of subjects, what would they be? Um, I like music, geography, and grammar. Music, geography, and grammar. The good news is two first grade and one second grade. Let's see music. 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 All right, first grade music. It's worth $1,000. The first grade music question is this. Which of the following patriotic songs contains the lyrics, Let Freedom Ring? Yankee Doodle, America, or You're a Grand Old Flag? Which of the following patriotic songs contains the lyrics, Let Freedom Ring? Yankee Doodle, America, or You're a Grand Old Flag? Your classmate Jenna has locked in her answer. You guys have locked in two blank stairs. What are you thinking? You're a grand old flag, you're a high flying flag. Na, 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 na. Is that Let Freedom Ring? Is that America? I mean, is that your grand America. old flag? America. Okay, so it's not America. Yankee Doodle went to turn around. It's not Yankee Doodle. It's grand old flag. Dylan, I will tell you this it is one of them. <laughs> you have eliminated all three. <laughs> oh, oh. Yow. Oh, goodness. Wow. Okay, Dan, what do you think, man? I'm thinking, I'm thinking you're a grand old flag. But I'm not, 
I'm not really, I don't know, Freedom, Freedom Ring, Freedom Ring. Golly, the first one, are you serious? All right, let me explain your cheats to you. You have a peek, which means you can peek at your classmate's hands. So if you like it, you can go with it. If not, you can go with your own. You have a copy, which means you have to take what they have written down. And you have a save, meaning if you answer and you're wrong, but they're right, they save you, and we continue on with the game. Do we want to think about that? Or? Yeah, first grade music is usually one of the toughest subjects. <laughs> I can't remember Let Freedom, let freedom Ring. Thank, what? thank goodness we didn't hit Ooh, first grade man. art today. Oh. Oh, dude, okay, what do you think? <laughs> I just don't know Let Freedom Ring. What, is it, here, here's the great thing, it's multiple choice. It is. You have all, you have all your cheats left, you still have your save left. You got a one in three shot if you just guessed. Uh, I'm gonna, what do you think, dude? Let Freedom Ring, I think it's your, your grand old flag. Your grand old flag, right? Contains the lyrics, Let Freedom Ring. Your grand old flag has that in there? America, man. Okay, dude, let's peek or copy. What do you think? I think peek. Let's peek. Let's peek. So let's peek. All right. The first grade music question. <laughs> Which of the following patriotic songs contains the lyrics, let freedom ring, Yankee Doodle, America, or you're a grand old flag? You wanted to peek. Your 10-year-old classmate, Jenna. <laughs> says she thinks it's America. America. See there? Let's, let's, let's just, let's end this nonsense and let's go with America. Let's do it. You wanna do it? Yeah. Oh, okay, let's, uh, we're gonna go with, uh, we're gonna log in here with America. Yeah! Oh, yeah. First grade music! Woo. First grade music! <laughs> Woo! Yeah. yeah. Woo. America's the right oh, answer. You got a thousand yeah. dollars. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. 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 That's right. right. On the first Woo. one. Are you kidding me? On the first one. Woo. The first one is done. The first one is done. Oh, yeah. one. Oh. OK. The rest of this. Woo. Nine subjects <laughs> left. You've got a thousand dollars. We can double it with a correct answer oh. right here. What subject would you like, guys? Second grade grammar. Okay. Second, grade grammar. Second, grade grammar. Second grade grammar. Second grade grammar. All right. Oh man. Second grade grammar. This is a little bit more uh, <laughs> Woo! stressful. It's worth two thousand dollars, guys. Here's the question. True or false? There's some good news. <laughs> True or false, in the English language, every grammatically correct sentence must contain at least one word with a capital letter. True or false, in the English language, every grammatically correct sentence must contain at least one word with a capital letter. Jenna has locked in her answer. I'm saying right. true. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go with true too. Is that what you think? I don't even need to think about it. I, you already said it. You wanna go with that? Uh huh. Okay. True. True. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> you guys said true. Every grammatically correct sentence must contain at least one word with a capital letter. Jenna agrees with you. You're all correct. You've got $2,000. It is true. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Woo. Had a girl down. All right. Yes. There are eight subjects on the board, guys. You got four classmates to choose from. Pick another one. Eight subjects on the board. You guys have got $2,000. We can turn it into $5,000 real quickly. 5, All right, what do you think, dude? What's, what's wrong? What are you good at? I'm really good at science and math. Science and math. Maybe. Science and math. Maybe uh, second grade measurements. OK. You think measurements? Second grade measurements. Second grade measurements. Let's do second grade measurements. All right, second grade measurements. 
The second grade measurements question worth $5,000 is going to be revealed when we come back. Don't go away. It's a twin edition of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Daniel and Dylan Cox from Tulsa, Oklahoma are playing the game as one tonight. As one. As one. Right now they've got $2,000. We're trying to turn it into $5,000. You selected second grade measurements. Here's the question. Jenna has a subscription to a magazine that comes every other week. How many issues of the magazine will she receive over the course of eight weeks? Jonathan's locked in his answer. Let me repeat That's the great. question. Jenna has a subscription to a magazine that comes every other week. How many issues of the magazine will she receive over the course of eight weeks? Every other week. He locked in quickly and you said, That's cool. <laughs> that was cool. So every other week, meaning by week by weekly, if you will, she would divide eight by two. Two. Eight by two. So I think the answer is four magazines over the course of eight weeks. Four magazines. Four magazines. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Woo! Four magazines. Why don't we ask the girl that gets the magazines, Jenna? How many magazines would you get over eight weeks? Four. Four? You're right. They're right. You guys have got $5,000. Yeah. 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 Do you get that kind of reaction everywhere you go? <laughs> Guys, the next question's worth 10,000. Pick another subject. First grade, first grade geography. First grade US geography. All right. US. The question's worth $10,000. Here it is. What is the name of the bridge shown in the following picture? What is the name of the bridge shown in the picture? Jonathan has locked in his answer. Um. I'm gonna go with, I think it looks like Golden Gate. All right, I'm gonna go yeah. with Golden Gate. Golden Gate Bridge. Golden Gate Bridge. Okay, let's see it. You said the Golden Gate Bridge. That's the right answer, you got $10,000. Three classmates left to choose from. Yeah. Olivia. Out of girl. Oh my, now we got third grade. All right, Olivia, if you had to help Daniel and Dylan with a couple of subjects, what would it be? Animal science and U.S. history. Animal science and U.S. history, the two third grade questions. Third grade animal science. Animal science. We need to get this one right. Yeah. Because you miss it, you're going home with nothing. You get it right, you have no less than $25,000 when you leave here today. The third grade animal science question is In terms of average size, what is the largest species of penguin? In terms of average size, what is the largest species of penguin? Olivia has locked in her answer. In 
terms of average size. You know what it is? What is the largest species of penguin? Do you know it? I'm thinking of something. What oh, are you thinking? No, you let me know. No, 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 I need to hear what you I'm think. thinking emperor. Emperor? Emperor, there's an emperor penguin? I believe so. Okay. Um, dude, do you, think, do you think that's it? Emperor, emperor penguin? I, I mean, we've got- the emperor penguin. We've got copy over there, but- yeah, you've, got, you've got a couple of cheats left. You do have your copy and your save. Okay, uh, let's go with it. Let's go with emperor penguin. Do you want to do that? Is that a yes or is that just yeah. a nod? No, it's a yes. Okay, Let's cool. Let's do that. Emperor penguins. Oh, I don't know. I don't even know. In terms of average size, what is the largest species of penguin? Let's see if Olivia could save you. Take a look at the board. Olivia said emperor. Oh, oh. Olivia cannot save you. She does not have to. Emperor is the right answer. You got $21,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 better than one. You see that? I like that. That's two brains. Guys, I'm not believing this. We're halfway to the million dollar question. You want to see him play for $50,000? We're going to do that when we come back. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? We have identical twins in the classroom tonight. Daniel and Dylan Cox from Tulsa, Oklahoma. They just got the $25,000 question correct. You're leaving here with money tonight. Money. That's good news. Money. We can double that $25,000 right now. Five subjects remain on the board. Pick another one. History. Fourth grade math. Yes. Let's do a little math. Fourth grade math. Do a little math. Fourth grade math. All right. Here's the question. When 17 is divided by 3, the remainder is R. What is the remainder when 13 is divided by R? When 17 is divided by 3, the remainder is R. What is the remainder when 13 is divided by R? Olivia has locked in her answer. Okay, let's do this really slow. Okay, yeah, because I need Three will go into 17 five times with two left over. Okay, three will go into 17 five times with two left over. 15. So two is R. Two is R. Two equals R. What is the remainder when 13 is divided by R? R is divided by, so we divide two by 13 is? Six. Two times six is 12, remainder one. So what is the remainder when 13 is divided by R? So it was one. One's the answer. One's the answer. One's the answer. Our answer is numero uno, one. One is R. I don't know if I feel that good about it. <laughs> you came up with one. You put your heads together and you came up with one. Olivia agrees. That's good. Eliminate the save. That's good. I mean. Gentlemen. That. You have fifty thousand dollars. You're exactly right. There it is. Seventeen divided by three is five, with a remainder of two. Thirteen divided by two is six, with a remainder of one. Bear with us, folks. We had to wait for the Jonas Brothers to get back to the podium here. You guys. Yeah. All right, four subjects left. You have two classmates remaining. Pick one of them and let's play for $100,000. I've heard. She's it. Come on. 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 
Okay. Oh. Hey, Francesca. Hey, Jeff. Which subject on the board do you like the most? Uh, I like science. She likes fifth grade science. It's up to you for 100,000. Let's pick a subject. Third grade U.S. history. Okay, let's go fourth grade English. I feel good about fourth grade English. Let's go. I mean, I feel, don't you feel good about yeah, fourth grade English? Yeah, I feel good Okay, let's do fourth, fourth grade English. Fourth, fourth grade, grade English. English, all right. <laughs> Woo! 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 All right, guys. Listen carefully because the wrong answer and you're giving back $25,000. The fourth grade English question worth 100,000 is this. Which of the following is an example of an oxymoron? Peanut gallery, rhyme time, living dead. Which of the following is an example of an oxymoron? Peanut gallery, rhyme time, or living dead? Francesca has locked in her answer. Oxymoron. Oxymoron. Talk it out. What's the definition of an oxymoron? What is the um, definition? What is it? It's two things that are completely opposite, isn't it? Yeah. I'm feeling living dead. Which of the following is an example of an oxymoron? Living dead. Living dead? Living dead. Living dead. Which of the following is an example of oxymoron? Peanut gallery, rhyme time, or living dead? You gentlemen decided that you like the answer, living dead. Yeah, you know what tickles me? When you guys first came out here, you had no money. The girls went crazy. <laughs> girls, what do you think now that they've got $100,000? too soggy because every fifth grader in the room had the right answer that time. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> all right, guys, three subjects. Pick your poison. World history. Pretty global. Yeah, not good with that. Fifth grade science. Global. Yeah, I think we go with third grade. Third grade U.S. history. I think so. Third, third, third grade. Okay. Third grade U.S. history. All right. Woo! Let's take it off. All right, guys. It is worth one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. The third grade U.S. history question is coming up when we come back. It's a twins edition of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader. Our contestants, Daniel and Dylan Cox from Tulsa, Oklahoma. They've got $100,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been a little adventure getting here. Kind of scary. Kind of scary. You selected third grade U.S. history as your $175,000 question. You ready for it? Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, let's do it. The third grade question, gentlemen, is this. What automotive company introduced a car called the Model T in 1908? What automotive company introduced a car called the Model T in 1908? Francesca has locked in her answer. What automotive company introduced a car called the Model T in 1908? Well, what's your answer? What do you think? Uh, Ford. Ford, Ford. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Ford, awesome. Uh, motor company, right? What uh, automotive company introduced a car called the Model T in 1908? There's only one Model T. It's Model, Model T. Ford. Model T Ford. Model T Ford. Ford. Read the question again, oh, out loud. What automotive company? Company. Company introduced a car called the Model T in 1908. 
in 1908. You said Ford, thinking Henry Ford. Ford. Henry Ford did invent the Model T, but for what company? Well, there's still Ford, there's still Ford. Ford is still a company, so is Ford the company? It is now. What was it called in 1908? Ford Model T. Ford Model Ford, T. Ford Motor, Motor Company. Ford Motor Company, is that it? That, yeah. Guys, of course it was the Ford Motor Company. Two, two subjects between you and the million dollar question. Guys, two subjects remain. You have your copy and your save left. You are down to your last classmate. Come on up, Bryce. Oh boy. Oh boy. Two fifth grade questions on the board. Bryce, which one do you like the most? World history. World history. Oh, man. OK. Hey! There's only two left. Let's go with, I think, science. I think science. 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 All right, fifth grade science. Yeah. All right, Woo! let's see it. The $300,000 question is, in the radio frequency abbreviation AM, the A stands for the word amplitude. What word does the M stand for? In the radio frequency abbreviation AM, the A stands for the word amplitude. What word does the M stand for? Bryce has locked in his answer. I'm hearing a little radio silence over here. <laughs> hey, what you got? I know you know this. Uh, what do you got? I thought it was anti meridian. Amplitude meridian? Does that sound right? Amplitude meridian, no. That's not right. I'm sure about that. Yeah, dude, it's not meridian, is it? It's How about. Meridian? Dude, what do you think? A, amplitude. M, measurement? That might be measurement? Yeah. Amplitude measurement? It's not measurement. Radio, it's, like, it's like a different. In the radio frequency abbreviation, AM, the A stands for the word amplitude. What word does the M stand for? Movements. Movements. Or <coughs> modification. Amplitude, would you say? Modification? No, what did you say earlier? Movement? No. Magnification. Magnification. Amplitude magnification. Why would that be AM? OK, guys, let's talk about where we're at. You still have two cheats left. You have a copy and a say. You could drop out of school. Or you could give me the right answer. God, man, I don't know, dude. I am stumped. I can't answer confidently. And I can't answer confidently that much least. money. So what do you want to do? Do you want to give up? Do you want to be no, less than a fifth you, grader? Do you want to be less than a fifth grader? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to drop out of school. OK, let's drop out of school. I think we're going to drop out of school. We're going to drop out of school. Oh. So you didn't want to trust your fifth grade classmate on a fifth grade question. The question in the radio frequency abbreviation AM, the A stands for the word amplitude. What does the M stand for? If you had said meridian, you would have dropped down to $25,000. Meridian is not the right word. The A stands for amplitude. The M stands for modulation. Modulation? I didn't get that at but all. I never even thought that. Never even crossed no. your mind. Let's see what Bryce said. 
morning. You did the right thing. You didn't know, you didn't guess, and you've got $175,000 guys, we'll save travel back to Oklahoma. Before you head that way, there's one thing I need you to do, okay? There's a camera right there. Let's hear the words. I'm Dylan Cox. I'm Daniel Cox. And we may finish each other's sentences, but we are not smarter, smarter than, than a fifth, fifth grader. Don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> guys, have a good day. He's saying I should double the money so it'll be more paid. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? All right, kids, you ready to meet your new classmates? She is a 48-year-old mother of Quinn Tuplets who graduated from Highland Park Elementary in Manchester, Connecticut. Please welcome Jerry Chandler. Now, you saw our last contestant, the twins, but that's nothing. You are the mother of quintuplets. That's five babies at once. I cannot imagine with five of them, you got a dirty diaper all the time. I, I'm t I would have let them walk around the backyard naked until they were old enough to potty train. Now, what age is this here? Two years. Two years. Yeah. Oh, what a beautiful family. You're here on a very, very special night because we have not only one class, we have a visiting class here tonight. So you're gonna get double the people to feed off of. Jerry, our visiting class tonight has been flown in from five different colleges from across the country. They are none other than your quintuplets. Here they are in their first order. Megan, Joshua, Amanda, Emily, So who do you want to cheat off first? Our class or your class? Heidi. Heidi, come on up here. <laughs> Heidi, how are you? Doing good. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now you're the youngest. You're the baby the of the group. You're the baby. Yep. <laughs> What's the difference in birth time between Megan the oldest and Heidi the youngest? Well, they're 20 seconds apart, so... 20? Yeah. That was a busy minute and a half, yeah, wasn't it? Indeed. We need to win some money tonight. You, and, and you know what? Part of the reason you're here tonight is, is you have to pay for tuition. That's exactly for five right. five kids at one... How much is that a year? Oh, it's well over $100,000. Oh, my goodness. This is a lot of books and tuition, so... <laughs> Y'all, let's find out. Is Jerry Chandler smarter than a fifth grader? First question is worth $1,000. What do you want to do? First grade help. First grade help. You like that? Yeah, All right. Sure. First grade health question is this. What joint in the human body connects the foot to the leg? What joint in the human body connects the foot to the leg? All right. The baby of the family, Heidi, has locked in her answer. What are you thinking, Jerry? The ankle connects the foot to the leg. I mean, I'll lock it in. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what Heidi said. What joint in the human body connects the foot to the leg? Heidi said, a tendon. Apparently you weren't paying a tendon when they taught this in the first grade. <laughs> what joint in the human body connects the foot to the leg? It is the ankle. You got a thousand dollars. All right, nothing to it, huh? A thousand dollars knocked off a of tuition for this year. We, we got a little okay. work to do. Nine subjects remaining, ladies. Which one would you like? First grade spelling. First grade spelling, all right. 
The first great spelling question, Jerry, is this. What word in this question comes first alphabetically? What word in this question comes first alphabetically? Heidi has locked in her answer. Okay. Well, I need to use the first letter of each word. That's what I'm thinking. Um, as my guide, and I have to say alphabetically. I'm gonna lock it in. Jerry, you're exactly right. You got $2,000 of Christmas alphabetic. Nice job. Thank you. Good to see you. All right, Mom. We've paid for a few books. You've got nine classmates to choose from. Do you want to go with a fifth grader or one of the quintuplets? All right, Jerry, eight subjects. Let's go with second grade earth science. Second grade earth science, all right. It is worth $5,000. The second grade earth science question is this. True or false, all plants have flowers. True or false, all plants have flowers. Bryce has locked in his answer. True or false, that's a good thing. 50-50 shot. I'm going to say that's false. All plants don't have flowers. Some plants have flowers. So, false. I'm going to lock it in. Now, I'm sure when the quince were born, you got a lot of flowers, right? Yes, I did. Yep, because you had time to take care of something else, right? <laughs> True or false, all plants have flowers. Let's see what your fifth grade classmate said. False. You're both right. You got $5,000. Oh, good job. We're going to be playing for $10,000 when we come back. Our contestant, Jerry Chandler, has $5,000. We're about to play for $10,000. We need to get a few more of these right because Jerry is the mother of quintuplets who are all in their freshman year of college. You're doing great so far. You have all your cheats left. You've got seven subjects remain. Jerry, which one would you like for the $10,000 question? Second grade math. You like it? Yeah. The second grade math question worth $10,000 is this. How many sides does a quadrilateral have? How many sides does a quadrilateral have? Bryce has locked in his answer. Uh, well, Quad is a prefix, like quint is, and I'm familiar with that. <laughs> I bet you are. Um, and I know that quad means four, so, and lateral, I believe, means side. So quadrilateral, I believe, refers to a four-sided shape. So four sides. I'm going to lock it in. Rectangles, squares, both examples of quadrilaterals. Six subjects. You still have eight classmates to choose from. Pick another one. Let's go after the $25,000 question. Joshua. Joshua. 
to her. Come on up here. How are you? Welcome Wonderful. to the show. All right, if you had to help mom out with a couple of subjects, what would you recommend? I'd say history or social studies. Well, fourth and fifth grade questions. Yeah. You are smart. <laughs> I'll see. It's up to you, Jerry. History. Fourth grade U.S. history. We need to get this question. You get this one right, you're going to walk out of here with no less than 25,000. You miss it, they're all coming back to live with you. We need to get this one right. The fourth grade U.S. history question, where $25,000 is going to be revealed next time on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader?